money, power, respect. The key to life. Will give. The key to life, money, power, respect. Louis Viscucci bet two private jets. Big money, the handsome watch the paper stack. Before them I had his and hers first not even a barber can face a rabbit. Money, power, respect, the key to life. Money, power, respect, if you see the light. Money, power, respect, the key to life, you will realize. Money and the power, power and the money, minute after minute every other hour. More money than any rapper's voice. Like Trump's wife up to my ears in carrots. Wise men are often remembered for their remarkable sayings. Nowadays cats are often remembered for their curt tongue. It's been said that what we learn from history is that we usually don't learn from history. History prepared us for yet another smashing hit. A classic case of pride and prejudice. Jane Austen. I know about you. I know about your history. You say I am rich but you're really poor. You say I can see but you're really blind. You say I am an authority figure, a pillar of my community. All I see is wickedness. In essence you are poor, wretched, naked, blind and sinful. That was Christ's interdiction against Smyrna or Thyatira. Think of simple man as coming online with his own bunch of ingredients. I will not make a case of the following class of delectable just follow the flow for a minute. Every fast paced novel ought to be like the ship's special shepherd's pot. String beans. See. Cauliflower. Butter toast. Pour off the cob and rye bread for breakfast. Only by looking at this place through the eyes of the Creator can we see just how far we've come from the day in the garden. You lend with no end. Backyard swimming pool. Palm breeze on the scenic route. Palm trees on the sun porch watching the day go by. You lend with no end. Walking with God in the cool of the day, like it was for Adam back in the garden again. Since then the world has been itching to reenact the days when man and God partly father and son in sync like a boy band. Look at what most books talk about. The terrors of night. The sun that harms by day and the moon by night. The earth has piriformed becoming a shadow world. Yet in the same pages we find cats resurrecting the good old days of Adam where cats picture this place with golden sunsets. Perfect people living in a new world. A place full of living and vibrant colors. Paradise. Love and romance by the fireplace. Cowboys in dancing shoes. Illicit romance, or should I call it Christian romance? You know cats have been asking the question why we call it Christian romance when there's so much fooling around in them novels. The key to life money, power, respect, if you see the light you'll realize. Mankind that word used to mean something. Man was patient. Man was kind. Man was cordial. Man had worth. Man had feelings. Man knew how to apologize. Man was a rational human being. Man was the object of desire. Man was friendly. Man bore no ill motives. Man knew how to treat each other. Man took care of what was important. Man knew how to care especially for the less fortunate. Man handled business with the Creator King. I romanticize, I know, but there was a time not so long ago when cats.
Scots cared little about power and position. When it came to settling scores, folks gathered at the track meet. Two chaps with issues to settle against each other did the manly thing and square danced in the boxing ring. Where there was beef galore, both chumps fought a clean fight, aka no underhanded tactics, like hitting a cat below the belt. And when worse came to worse, it was ten paces back to back and bang. Like I said, I romanticize so let by gods be by gods let us talk instead of things happening on the daily planet. Ever ask the question how mankind became so competitive? 24 hour news segments. Internet radio. All day weather and sporting channels. We have all day to sit and watch, we hardly sit and watch. Do we have a clue how much poison is flowing through the pipeline? In the last days there will be an increase of knowledge. An increase in lawlessness. An increase in wickedness. Man's heart will turn cold. No more room for the right thing. No room for the Christ seems. Plenty of room for weird things. Not enough surprise, delight, and exuberance, especially when it comes to the things of God. Just room for excess, it seems. This is what one cat spoke about in a booklet I read some years back, The Art of Accumulation. Blotting ourselves with things way above the flips all line. You know in the old days, merchant vessels were looked upon with such dread. Sailors came only to expect danger on high seas. To such an extent that these vessels were dubbed floating caskets by land lovers. That was until legislation was passed that set limits on the amount of cargo each ship could carry at sea. Even now as we speak one need only open their eyes and witness as these regulations get blotted. Ships run aground. Oil spills. Toxic waste released on foreign soil. Ships that pass in the night we spend most of our time, money, effort, and ability creating stuff that only brings out our good side. Hardly anyone does something that does not attempt in any way to bring out their brilliance. Online I only see perfection. For now. We see things as if through a Corinthian mirror. Later when the perfect one comes we shall see things more clearly. For now, we speak in part. For now, we understand in part. For now, we prophesy in part. When the imperfect things pass on we shall attain pure perfection. Then as the Son of Man has attained perfection, all praised the Most High, the Most High God, for all days. Only thing missing remaining is finding out from God whom he accepts such utterances from. Will give. Book 714. I took some time off from writing to do a bit of study on quotes I wrote a few years ago that have never seen the light of day. If you have overcome your inclination, and not been overcome by it, you have reason to rejoice. Titus Maxius Plautus, Roman playwright 254 B.C. 184 B.C. Advice in old age is foolish, for what can be more absurd than to increase our provision for the road the nearer we approach our journey's end? Marcus Tilius Cicero, Roman orator. I would exterminator of innocents have sold whether the judge is condemned when the guilty is acquitted. Publicerus, Latin my writer. A ship that is too large is apt to trip one, and when too small, to pinch the foot. So it is with those whose fortune does not suit them. Quintus Horatius Flaccus, Roman lyric poet, 65 BC, ABC. Like Mr. Caradus, this is a flight of swords, 
across the globe where prose meets objective thought. A worldwide trip in my Learjet all aboard Flight 714 to the island of Jakarta. There is something about reading one's thoughts on paper that makes for interesting conversation. The need for meditation and introspection has become less and less of a necessary art in today's world of sophistication. And in the process of making it easier on cats to do research, it has become evident to some that mankind is no longer as thoughtful as he ought to be. The ordinary method of taking a plane trip looks more like island hopping, with nothing much to see than a deep blue sea. In other words, the ordinary commercial flight is a short trip among the clouds, where nothing much can be spoken of the passengers and the cabin crew on board the aircraft. Browsing through the web, in search of material for research, one hit on the net brings tons of information onto the computer, tablet, or cell phone screen, most of this being a bunch of words repeating themselves on the same topic. We used to navigate across land and ocean, using nothing but constellation and heavenly beings. Mankind gave us Socrates, Homer, Iliad, Epic of Gilgamesh. From the shipyard of Liverpool, mankind gave us the Titanic and the Poseidon. Mankind gave us the steamboat and the transatlantic trade route. On the ocean floor, mankind connected the whole earth with submarine cable and junction boxes. Mankind gave us the fax machine, the telex and the telegraph office. Mankind gave us the washing machine. Mankind gave us the post office, telephone operator, and the postal directory. Mankind gave us the gold exchange, the diamond exchange. Sadly, in all that passage of time our conversations have not yet followed the same trade route. The postal directory is more complicated than most of the sources of information we have on the World Wide Web. I heard a preacher on the tube tell his congregation that the word, lost depicts ownership. The parable of the lost sheep. The parable of the lost boy. The parable of the prodigal son. Following this train of thought, the preacher continued telling his parishioners that all of humanity has been engrafted into the tree of life. And every one of our names is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If all humanity is in the Book of Life, then whose name is missing? The Archangel Lucifer, perhaps? Will a parent go out looking for children that don't belong in his own family tree, unless such a dad formed part of an elite group of rescuers searching through the rubble of a fallen building or combing a bush or forest for missing persons? Will the real Jesus please stand up? Wait, there's eight of them, nine of them, a whole bunch of them. Could it be the one with blonde dreads, the one with aqua blue eyes? Could it be the white Jesus we see whenever he happens to appear on the big screen? Or is it the Middle Eastern rabbi from Galilee the messianic preachers talk about on TV? Is it the one hanging between two thugs? You know the one before Mohammed? The one coming from the lineage of Judah, the one spoken of by Moses in the book of Deuteronomy? Or is it the one Greek, Roman, and Parthian scholars compare with Socrates? The Christ we see on TV. The I am that I am. The Son of God. The Son of David. The Son of Man. The last Adam. The Jesus we see on award shows. Is he the one on the front page of Time magazine? The one on all the covers of Why Jesus, the one having a Messiah type complex? Is he the one hanging like a poster? The one who popped up like a toaster? The 
one with holes in his hands, the one dressed in his wardrobe, the one sure to come whenever he wants to. Which Christ do you believe? Better know before you leave, let's leave. They asking Sam a lot of questions. Like what in the world is the music doing in there? What sort of Mickey Mouse organization goes to Disneyland? Get around underground how you like me now? Wait till they get a hold of me if all the world's a stage and we are actors on stage. In the theater of God's magnificent design. Do we know which part of the show Willie Coyote and the Roadrunner make a big entrance, Captain Hiller? Which God do we believe? The one who can come up with a heaven full of angels and not a hell full of devils? Are we to believe in a creator who can come up with tropical islands and ocean breeze, but not sun-kissed deserts and sandstorms? If we are all good little boys and girls, are we to fare better by being good for goodness sake? What about feelings and emotions? Two things were told were put there for the purpose of misleading men. Why study emotional intelligence then come up with statements that seem to contradict this enterprise? Do we all live on the same climatic zone? Is the world a place where we all enjoy the same food? Barbecue spots. Sunday lunch. Dinner. Supper. Afternoon tea. Breakfast club. Second breakfast. Ten o'clock tea. Drinking parlor. Or are we living in one huge slow cooker? Are we actors on stage in the theater of war? Pressure plates. Time bomb. Bouncing bedding. Landmines. Motion activated devices. Are we in the era of smart bombs? Hell's Kitchen Hellfire. Napalm. X warheads. Triple A's and Bombardier crewmen. We all know that the creator of the universe meant for mankind to enjoy peace and serenity on the earth. I pray that you may prosper and be in sound health even as your soul prospers. That it is the will of the Father to give his children the kingdom. That all may know him, the one true God, and the power of his resurrection. Still in the plans he makes man will only spend eternity in one of two places. In his presence where there is fullness of joy. At his right hand where there is pleasure forevermore. Or away from his presence where there is utter darkness. Where the soul is desolate and there is nothing but anguish wailing and gnashing of teeth. Some of us live that deserve to die. Some have died that deserve to live. And you give it to them. Do not be so eager to deal in death and judgment. Even the very wise cannot tell what the good Lord is truly up to. And out.